Hey you guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, West Indy Collection. If you are new to my channel, welcome. You are now a Westie's Besties. <laughs> but yeah, so this video is going to be a little different because I just wanted to like, you know, share a little bit of my background, where I come from, as far as like, you know, just me being known and like, you know, building a platform for myself because I've had gained a platform over, you know, the recent years. So I just want to give you guys just a little bit of background. You guys, one second. And so for like the recent years, and basically, I just want to just basically share this with you guys just to, you guys can, I, won't, I don't want to say like relate because obviously you guys probably wasn't in the same situation as me or something similar. But just to give you guys a little bit of background or like maybe if you guys to like understand me more or like where I come from when it comes to certain things or my mindset or just how I have leveled up since. And I just want to be like an inspiration for those out there who was, was in my footsteps, is in my footsteps or, you know, heading in my footsteps or just have obviously used to be in my footsteps. Well, not actually my footsteps, but my you know similar journey because we all can relate on some things you know so i just want to share a little bit about it i know i may get a lot of hate or negative comments but i'm just basically keeping it real with you guys and like i said i'm just sharing this because i want to build you guys to actually see like wow she has came a long way you know and you guys could comment too if you guys think i've you know grown sense if you guys think my mentality is like in the same space or not in the same space since from when i first came here to atlanta so that's what basically this video is going to be about this video is basically going to be about my journey of first coming to atlanta like what how did i come to atlanta and like where was i when i first came to atlanta like what did i do like where was i at things of that nature I don't want to spend too much long on this video. We could call this like maybe like a part one. And if you guys want to like know more, learn more about me and my journey from then and to know how it up to now today, then just comment, let me know. But before we get into this video, make sure you guys like this video, hit the push notifications and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let's get into it. Okay, you guys, first and foremost, Jamaican mind. Hey, hey, Jamaica, man. Hey, hey, yeah, man, yeah, man, come on, man. <laughs> but um, yeah, you guys. So basically, yeah, I'm just gonna like let's just hop right into it, okay? Okay, so huh, this is really gonna have me like thinking. So so far, I've been in Atlanta for about six, seven years now. Cause I came here, I want to say like 2018 ish, like middle slash towards the end of that year. And when I did come here, I was by myself. And then I'm going to get my son. He came down here with me for a while. And then, you guys, you guys ever know, like, how mothers go through, like, postpartum depression and everything? I, in the very beginning, I don't think I ever experienced that with my oldest son. But to be honest, here in Atlanta, I felt like it hit me while he's at a later age. Like, I think he would have been, like, maybe six years old here. When he was here with me, he was like really, really young. And I feel like I was just going through a lot at that point and at that point in time in my life. And it got to the point where I just needed like a break. I needed to get my hustle on and it was just supposed to be a temporary help when he was it obviously at the time in my physical care. I've always still showed up for my son well, visit him back home and everything. But basically I'm not gonna get into too too much of the details. Um but basically, that's when my son am going back with family for that point on, basically. But like I said, my journey has been through ups and downs. And like I said, I'm not going to get into all the details because if you know, you know, like from what happened and everything. But I don't want to kind of like go back to that point in time in my life of sharing that type of information because it's touchy. And I'm just like, I don't hold back anything. I want to share my story. But you know, it's, it's regarding family and I don't want to like, you know, touch on, you know, like touch people's like feelings and that nature, whatever. But anywho, that's pretty much what happened. My son was definitely with family. And so basically, so I could just try to, I guess, you know, get my life together here in Atlanta. Like, 
So I've always wanted to like be into modeling. First of all, I came to, I, before I came to actually moved to Atlanta, I had actually visit Atlanta, I think like that year prior or something. I've always said, oh, I wanna go to Atlanta or whatever, right? So when I first came down to Atlanta, I went with someone from back home, was, like two people from back home. I think they would do like a video shoot or something in Atlanta and I had riding down with some type of thing. And because I had, I was going to um, attend like this Avenger event here in Atlanta. And yeah, to me, Atlanta, it looked different from what it was from when I actually moved here. Because at that time, I was just a visitor. And like I visited around the city and all that stuff. Like, no, I was just attending somewhere. That type of thing. I didn't even think too, too much of it. And then I think I was like, I don't know, downtown. But I probably really wasn't Buckhead. Because I don't know, I felt like. Maybe there was a mall downtown or something, but maybe it was actually Buckhead. I really don't know. This is how, like, maybe because I was more younger at the time also. Like, so I just wasn't thinking, like, hmm, putting two to two together and stuff. Like, I was just new, you know, visiting. So, eventually, I've been through some other livable situations at different, like, cities and stuff. But I'm not going to talk too much on that either. <laughs> you guys want more of that. But basically, like, long story short, I came to Atlanta right now when I came to Atlanta I can't remember how much money I had on me this was also when I was in the entertainment industry so I was definitely living the fast life and everything and when I came here I honestly didn't know anybody no family no nothing um what happened was though I did I think I knew though prior to coming people through social media like I have known well have met and stuff but I don't think I actually like when I came here like just knew people I think only through like social media and by the way my entertainment career or whatever you guys want to call it didn't start in Atlanta it started way before I even touched down in Atlanta so basically so I was here and I honestly I can't remember I didn't have nowhere to stay honestly like when I first shopped here in Atlanta I think I caught the Greyhound here to Atlanta. I don't think I flew into Atlanta. And don't mind me if I if I seem so kind of like all over the place or confused. It's because I really have to backtrack like when I first came here. But yeah, I don't think I flew to Atlanta when I moved here. I think I, I probably could have. But I can't really remember. It's been so long ago. It feels like, uh, it's not like it was just like yesterday. Only some things I probably may remember like it was just yesterday. So... If I didn't flew, I most definitely caught the Greyhound bus here. And yeah, it was a drive for sure. It was definitely a drive. And I can't remember how much money I had on me. I can't remember the first thing I did when I first got here. I really do not remember. But what I could say is because I was in the adult entertainment industry, I had ended up creating, like, I had, like, this family here that was in the industry. And I'm talking, like, various, like, ages. It was, like, this group, this, like, industry, like, group here in Atlanta where we were like, you know, with other content creators, we would, he, they would like book like these big old Airbnbs and we would all come together and just shoot like content and go crazy. And I will say the owner name, his name is Mr. Nuts. He is an older guy. I did shoot content with him before. And so yeah, it was just like, you know, some older guys, older women, people around like my age and everything. I did meet some other people through like social media in the industry. And it was like both females and guys. And it was all cool vibes. You know what I mean? Being West Indy Princess, aka West Indy Mommy. So he used to call me Indy. Like some of them they used to like just call me Indy. And I obviously know that they were talking to me, but not like I really cared just to be called just Indy. But I let I did let certain people call me just Indy because you know, I guess they were cool with it. I guess comfortable with calling me that. So I remember he hooked me up. I think he paid for my talent testing because, you know, us as industry people, uh, that's what we do in the industry when, you know, especially when you're taking, when you're trying to be taken seriously, that's the more professional way to do it is when you go through talent testing. So I have my place here that I used to go to and stuff. Um, and I remember him offering to pay for it for me. It was like a hundred, I think $25. And I remember him saying that he'll pay for it for me. And then um, they didn't really, I think he knew I didn't really have a place to stay. So he let me stay at that particular like Airbnb because they rented out for like a few days, like a whole week or something. So that gave me time, leeway time to have obviously a place to stay. 
But one thing about me is I always pretty much had money because I was always a hustler. So I always had like a booking or just always something. I just didn't have like my own place. So pretty much in the beginning, like that's pretty much what I did. I would stay in Airbnbs or like um, at the time not really so much a hotel. But I remember like there was times I did to stay with like clients. Um, it was this one older guy to stay with in this extended stay. He was like further out. I don't know if it was like Duluth. It was like some like further away area. But one thing I could say is I've been pretty much all around Atlanta. Like the outskirts suburbs. Like I've been all around. Like I know to every private place. But uh, I stayed with this person for like some time. And eventually that it worked out because I didn't want to. Why well, I did have like, you know, intercourse with him. And so eventually, I guess, you know, he didn't like it. And one time he tried to force himself on me like he was trying to rape me or whatever. But basically that didn't work out. He wanted me to eventually leave because I wasn't giving him really the goods at some point. Only when it came to like money, you know. But other than that, just to be doing it, just, be, just because I was staying with him and his extended stay. Like, no baby. But that's just. I just want to, like, I'm very an open book. Obviously, I've been with a lot of guys and stuff, you know, all types of business stuff. There, it is not, it wasn't just people, like, in Atlanta. It was people that will fly into Atlanta, like, business people. Just, I don't have to really say too much, you know. Like, I made a name for myself and everything, you know. And it started with me, obviously, from having my Twitter page and stuff, too. Like, I got a platform because I have, like, a lot of followers on my Twitter page, which I still do have my Twitter page. I have lost like followers drastically on that because I think because of me stopped doing entertainment over time. But I've obviously like I got a big fall off of that and stuff. I dealt with certain people here in Atlanta. Like I stayed at different places. But kid, like, you know, your girl hopped around, okay? But I was at Airbnb's, you know. I was doing my thing. I was going out, I was going to bars. I was just doing my thing, you know. Um, I did have like moments where I would get frustrated and stuff too. Like, oh, I need some money because I was always like money hungry. Like, when I knew I was getting low on money, I had bills too. Like, eventually, I started getting more bills. But this was also a, like the come up time when I was getting my surgeries. Um, this was also around the time when obviously I, I eventually, well, I had like a eventually got a room to rent and then I eventually got me an apartment. So it's kind of like I was working my way up ladder and i felt like i came so far in atlanta compared to if i would have stayed back home in pittsburgh like i felt like i really leveled up here even though i came to atlanta not really doing what i really wanted to do well i came here because like warmer weather more opportunities different scenery like just different things you know new fresh start of life but i didn't come here really getting into the modeling and they do seem like they're big here when it comes to like um, video vixens and stuff and I'm not saying I wanted to be a video vixen I wanted to just do modeling but me not really knowing too much people and then you know you have to have a car x y and z at the time I didn't start off having my car so I finally got my car after I got my apartment and I did all that stuff for me I don't care what nobody said my body was my business and I was a straight hustler and everything that I had I worked hard for and I don't care if you guys consider, well, your body is not, like, considered, like, a real job. Like, you didn't have a real job. But to me, that's how I look at it, as in the fast life. My, this was my money maker. So, it's like, to me, I still work hard. It's still part of me. I, I worked for that, you know. So, it's definitely, like, I was continuing, like, to climb up the ladder and everything. I was staying with, like, different people. And some scenarios... Some scenarios, uh, things that probably didn't work out was because, you know, either they had an excuse, like they were trying to get something from me and then try to like say, oh, I had to leave because they either lied saying that was their place, it wasn't really their place, or they just got what they wanted from me, or they just tried to use me for, you know, what. And eventually, you know, I was just basically being used at times. So avoiding all, of, even got to a point when my son, this was before my son had, um, when I, before I gave him to my family for just a temporary period of time for me to get myself together my son was with me but um he was always safe i always stayed up to his doctor's appointments he was in daycare all that stuff so it wasn't like i wasn't taking care of my son any of that like you know stuff i was a great mom to my son while he was with me here in atlanta he may have been bad it may have been some frustrating times but that's my everything i, I did the best that i could 
and the best that I could to protect him. But he has experience with me in the beginning, you know, with us staying in Airbnbs and stuff. But one thing I always made sure was that we had ride of places. Like I was, like I said, I was always getting money. So it's not like I was down for too long because I always had something coming up. And I did have booked nannies, like where a nanny would come to the Airbnb and watch him. Or, you know, I had to definitely make some life sacrifices, some risks and stuff. Like, you know, I that comes with a lifestyle, just being a risk taker. But one thing about me that I could say or about my son is that he always been safe and stuff. And sometimes us as women or mothers, we may not like certain situations, but we do what we got to do because we know what we're trying to get to. So we may not like that temporary situation, but we have to pull through and do it for our child because... We're trying to get what we want at the end of the day. Now, you guys may not think I was obviously living a, a healthy or whatever life, but it's definitely helped me. And obviously, not like that has been something I'm doing forever the rest of my life, right? But I do want to build, inspire others. I want to build, say, like, you know, like, be careful, you know. Um, try to, like, hustle, be focused, get yourself together, which I was doing because I even started my West Indy collection business, got my business license when I was staying with somebody. Um, and like I said, I am blessed that I haven't really had no terrified, like, things or, like, you know, really too much of a scare. But there has been times when I'll be at outside a restaurant. One time I was outside a restaurant with Momo. I mean, not with Momo. My oldest, I think it was a Chick-fil-A. I don't know what side of town it was. And we, we were like kind of stranded at that particular time. And then someone on my Instagram reached out and they came, you know, I think it got us. They were surrounded, booked us a room for that night. So I was really off from hustling stuff. Yes, you could say I was not stable, but the whole goal was for eventually me to get stable. Mind you, I was new in the city. It's not like I came down here already with an apartment. Like, this was just me literally living a fresh start of life, you know? Like, it's not like it was like, plan prior because of me being in the fast and that lifestyle um so yeah like basically the whole hopping around with different guys and stuff just didn't you know obviously it just it wasn't good you know because it was nothing you're right like it wasn't nothing you know stable for me and so eventually I came across like this Facebook thing where um, I met this person, this like landlord of this house, and that's where I was able to run out of room. And from since then, I met new people in that house and everything. And that was a whole, took another turn in my life. But I've been there for like a couple months, and then that's when I actually got my apartment. And my son wasn't with me at the time. You know, I had to fight for him for like three years. It was really long, stressful because I was missing my baby. But I got furniture all on my own, like, your girl was on her hustling stuff out of the car, I had my wash, washer and dryer, all that stuff. Because, you know, like, and then I used to, like, obviously go out with stuff to, like, certain, like, lounges, things like that. You know, just living life, having drinks, turning up, things like that. Traveling, I was also traveling, too, at times while living in Atlanta, things of that nature. And so, you know... That's pretty much all I can really say is that your girl just kept coming up, coming up, rising up to the top, you know. Um, and this is me not having no job. This is me strictly working for myself because I'm not one of them cheap people. Like, I, I charge good money for myself or else I could have been getting more money if I stuck to certain prices. But just like I said, I'm my own boss. So, like, it was really up to me how, how much I want to charge people, stuff like that. And, you know, there's no, like, shame in my game. But, yeah, I was one of them. I was out there. I was one of them type of people, you know. And I was, you know, holding on OnlyFans, not giving AF. And I was just really doing my thing. Like, really focused on getting money. And I didn't care who didn't like it. I didn't care what nobody said about me. Nothing. Because I'm my own superstar, you know. And that's pretty much how it was. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much into things start to slow down a little bit. And like I said, I'm not gonna go into much of my afterlife. Like, well, what was your next step after you had that apartment? How you left that one? Well, like I said, y'all want a part two? Let me know. Or I would love to. I wouldn't mind talking about this once I eventually go live. I'm just trying to like get like my laptop fixed eventually and stuff. And I would love to go live a couple times. I'm actually miss going live on my Instagram because I used to stay, turn it up and everything. Like I'm just I was just lit like that. Like lit. 
so yeah you guys that's pretty much it though that's pretty much it i remember one time i did like this house party where i was like a dancer was, like me and this other girl it was like it, it was okay it was like one of these guys that i knew but it was like i think for his nephew birthday party it was something like that but um i had a good time though even though it was like more like older teenagers i mean obviously all the adults was there it was like a party like they put on like they wanted some dancers to come for them i guess i don't know but i'm still in good connection with some of the people that have spent money on me um i definitely have like my close ones and stuff um that i know have been loyal to me let's just say that that been loyal to me of course people come and go but i definitely have like my people that's loyal to me mind you this is me not having no pen no manager this is all me straight being my own boss like people come to me for everything like and that's all because i made a name for myself people know know me for who i am i'm not ashamed of the industry that was in none of that it's just you know as life goes on and you level up and stuff and you looking back it's kind of like wow like you're not in that place anymore you know it's like well what's next what's new and then a lot of the times a lot of things also changed because i did get my son back so things may feel a little different be a little different even though i still been through some you know things but he's been back with me and then i obviously became pregnant and now I have momo so my life is not really the same and another thing i want to say is this is not something i started when i was a teenager my early teens i mean not teens my early 20s when i had thomas no like i started the industry when i probably was like what 23 24 probably so it's not like i've been doing this for like a long time it's not like I just woke up out of bed like, oh, I'm going to do this today or I'm going to that. Like, I didn't. And I always knew I was a hustler since I was a kid and independent. But I never knew, like, I would be on this type of stuff. Like, don't get me wrong. I love sex. I love, I have a high sex shot. All that good stuff. But I never, I never thought I was going to actually do this, you know, like, for a living and everything. So, that's a little bit of, you know, about me. If you guys have any questions, let me know. If you guys want to you know have a part two let me know but i just want to basically just share my story with people if there's other you know females that's like want to learn from my situation or this may i don't know motivate you to still be on some hustle and stuff i don't know but one thing i could share is be safe be careful and be definitely tunnel vision definitely have faith and focus on your goal if you have goals focus on your goals and if you are a parent a mother whatever you have a child and you're separated from your child or if your child living with you and you're just hustling or just worrying and stuff keep doing it for you and your child until you accomplish your goals but be safe be careful so i don't feel right don't do it um I can't really speak for everybody because I didn't have a manager or someone or someone put me on. It's kind of like I kind of like I was just already in the mix in that type of like the industry community and stuff because it's it's kind of small, believe it or not. Like everybody kind of knows everybody, especially when you go to like events and stuff. The known, the more known, like like the more known entertainers, you know, like of course a lot may not be like mainstream. Like I wasn't really too mainstream when I did what I did. I was shooting with companies though and I did like OnlyFans stuff and I did like my bookings and stuff but I shot with some like mainstream but I wasn't like super mainstream like you know with like a agency I was nothing like that but if you guys want if you guys like hearing these like stories of me my past or whatever like not to shame or anything but if you guys just want to know just to just be I don't know like just to hear learn just be curious, know what the lifestyle is about and everything. Let me know. I'll be more than happy to share. I mean, I as you can tell, I like to talk. So, I mean, you know, like, you live once. So, I don't mind, like, sharing my story. Like, there's no shame in my game. Obviously, you know, I'm moving on. And, you know, obviously, you know, I want to build, have, you know, a real relationship, a husband, raise a family and everything, you know, like none of that has changed. Um, I still feel like I'm still me, but 
I'm definitely, my mindset may be a little changed just because of where I'm at in my life. But your girl was doing her thing, okay? And I'm just happy, I'm thankful, I'm blessed. Nothing didn't happen to me. And I'm just blessed that, you know, God knows my true intentions. And look where I'm at now, starting from scratch. So I just hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like this video. Hit the push notifications and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you guys would love to like say anything off my Amazon wish list, like a nice gift, or if there's something um there's something that you would like to send me, but you it's not nothing on my Amazon wish list, just feel free to send me an email. All my links to everything will be linked in the description box below. Feel free to email me if you guys have like any questions regarding wish lists, anything regard like regarding that nature. Feel free to always email me as well. Um, I don't always have to, you don't always have to ask me right in the comments. If you want it more private, intimate, feel free to email me as well and I'll have a problem answering. So I hope you guys have a wonderful, you know, day or night <laughs> and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Mwah.